Welcome to the deep dive. Today we're looking at something pretty wild, this this great Eurasian weather divergence. It really is. A continent basically split in two weather-wise. A split that's creating two totally different holiday seasons across Europe and Russia. I mean, this pattern seems to defy all the historical norm. That's a perfect way to put it. For this holiday window, December 21st to the 30th, you have two competing regimes. Okay. In the West, you get this high energy, very wet maritime storm regime, but then in the East, they're just getting slammed by a severe continental winter regime, or SCWR. So, two different continents, weather-wise, sharing one landmass. The big question is why now? What kicked right. the whole system over right before the holidays? So the main driver, it started way, way up, like 30 kilometers above us in the stratosphere. Stratosphere, okay. Yeah, in late November, we got this this huge event called a sudden stratospheric warming, an SSW. A warming event. That causes a deep <laughs> freeze. That yeah. feels uh, backwards. It does seem counterintuitive, but think of the polar vortex, like a giant stable container holding all the coldest Arctic air. Right. The SSW was a sudden heat spike about 50 degrees Celsius that basically just shattered that container. Yeah. The vortex collapses and all that frigid air spills out. And it's not just the SSW acting alone, is it? I saw something about the <laughs> the QBO, the easterly quasi-biennial oscillation. Exactly. The QBO is like a massive steering current high above the equator. Yeah. In this phase, and you couple that with weak La Nina conditions. Yeah. The whole atmosphere is just perfectly primed to grab that spilled Arctic air and shove it deep into Europe. It's a triple alignment for a maximum cold outbreak. So this Arctic air is spilling out into an atmosphere that's already, what, energized? Absolutely. You have to see this against the backdrop of global warming. 2025 is almost certainly going to be one of the hottest years on record. And we passed the 1.5 degree Celsius threshold for two months straight. Exactly. So there was enormous energy stored in the system right before it crashed. And then there's the Arctic itself. We're seeing this Atlantification, right? The warmest air on record, the lowest sea ice extent since the 80s. Mm -hmm. So does a warmer Arctic actually make these cold snaps worse? That's the key. Climate change doesn't get rid of the cold. It creates what we call thermal whiplash. Whiplash, okay. We saw parts of Europe that were 8 to 12 degrees Celsius above normal in early December, and now this. It's that sudden, violent transition into a deep freeze. Okay, so let's bring this down to the ground. What are the actual high-impact facts people should be watching for? Well, in the West, after December 27th, it looks like the beast from the East is back. So that's the UK, Ireland. Yeah. Watch places like Newcastle. They could plummet to minus 6 Celsius, maybe colder, with a lot of snow. Ireland is bracing for its most intense cold in years. And while that's happening, Russia gets the full, unmitigated deep freeze. Full SCWR. Moscow sees a sharp drop to minus 10 around the 23rd. But the really alarming part is further east, near Lake Baikal. The hurricane force winds. Hurricane force gusts. 32 to 37 meters per second. That's not just a windy day, that's infrastructure damaging stuff. Wow. And you even see this split on a smaller scale, like in the Caucasus. An extraordinary bifurcation. Wow. Georgia has life-threatening avalanche danger up high, but flash floods from heavy rain down low, it's a complete mess. So the real strategic risk here isn't just the cold or the storms in isolation, it's it's that collision zone between them. That's it, exactly. The most acute threat is freezing rain and ice glaze right along that thermal gradient. Which is just catastrophic for infrastructure, for power grids. Absolutely. It means you need two completely different emergency responses. The West is focused on floods and storm damage, while the East has to deal with massive ice accumulation and blizzard clearing. So the big picture here, for you listening, is that this isn't just a weird holiday forecast. It's a sign of a real, fundamental shift in how our atmosphere behaves. It is. It's that stratospheric instability layered right on top of an already energized warming world. And the final thought I'd leave you with is this. The intensity of these events means they aren't really outliers anymore. We have to start recalibrating how we design our infrastructure. That old one in a hundred year event, that's fast becoming the new baseline you have to plan for.